So it's July 3rd and we're here in the Eagle River District of the Shwamagon Nicolay National Forest and uh, we're at a bear bait site that is right off of Highway 55. Uh, we've reported the site to DNR because it's less than 100 yards from the pavement and DNR bear baiting regulations say that you must place your baits at least 100 yards from any road posted 45 miles or higher speed limit, which Highway 55 definitely is. Uh, we discovered this bait last month, put a trail camera on the location, that trail camera was stolen, uh, and this bait has been operable since then, so we've been, that's why we were monitoring it, we wanted to be able to get a license plate number on who the baiter was so we could report to DNR, but uh, until we do find out more about this bait, we're just going to keep an eye on it, monitor it, and that's what we're doing here in the National Forest, we're uh, helping to illustrate to public lands officials as well as the public the practices that are taking place on public lands. As you can see, this isn't a temporary bait. This is permanent. This is sunken into the ground, so it's permanent. So this is a fixture on the, nat on the national forest landscape where wildlife uh, repeatedly, yearly, know that they can be intentionally fed. Uh, not only is it close to the highways, you can hear the cars, but it's also close to lots of multiple campsites. Uh, the practice of feeding bears in Wisconsin in excess of 5 million gallons of bait a year is a horrible practice that results in the conditioning of not only black bears into being fed by humans, but also other animals like gray wolves, which leads to conflict as we've reported. And I just wedged the tape in the actual bait log and shoot for the road. So uh, if you could come here and look at the tape, standing on the white line of Highway 55, that was a car that just went by at about 55 miles an hour. It's at 275 feet. That's about uh, 10 yards short of what it should be legally. And you know, some people would say, oh, come on, that's just 10 yards, it's a big deal. But you know what, it is a big deal when you're intentionally feeding large carnivores that are dangerous to humans and other people and animals is that you don't want to intentionally bring those animals close to the road. Not only might they cause a traffic collision, but a lot of this area has campgrounds and picnic areas. And if these bears get conditioned to being fed so closely to the road, what's going to happen when a family comes here and doesn't know about uh, bear baiting policies and is having a picnic? That's the conflict that uh, these bear hunters are creating with reckless bear baiting, such as what we just documented here. We're going to go to another bear bait site that we believe is too close to the road and measure that so we can show, uh, show you what we're talking about also in the area. So it's July 4th and we're returning to a second bait site that we reported to DNR last month. Uh, the reason we reported this bait site to DNR was because this Forest Service road that we're now on, which is off of Fiscal Road, off of Highway 70, is uh, uh, this Forest Service road has the bait extremely close to the road. So we're just going to measure, confirm, get an actual reading on how far from this road it is. and. Uh, we spoke with DNR wardens yesterday and they were checking back on their report to determine what had been concluded about these baits. Uh, the warden told me that in most of these situations they will inform the baiter that their bait is out of compliance and have them bring the bait back into compliance and then it doesn't usually result in a citation. I parked my car at the trailhead to the bait, which is right here, and we'll see how far it is from where we're parked. And we'll walk back to the bait site. So you can see right there, you can bring the camera up close. We're talking just 55 feet from the road that I'm parked on right now. It's supposed to be 50 yards is the minimum requirement for bait. So the good news is that this bait isn't being used currently, but but you can notice it's a, this is a permanent bait that has been in here for who knows how many years. And uh, one of the reasons we'd like registration of baits to be a requirement is, is that so DNR could know whose bait this is uh, 
and who's responsible for it so that if it's it being out of compliance it can be removed and and uh, we could always find out whose baits this are. That's a big issue is that Wisconsin does not require any registration for their bear baits. They also have an unlimited number of baits that you can use. Somebody can go out and have 50 bear baits in the woods that they want, 60, 100, it doesn't matter, as many as they can maintain. And the DNR doesn't even have to know where they are. That's a problem and that's something we'd like to see changed. And if it isn't changed on the state level, with a DNR, then it should at least be changed on US Forest Service policy. That unless bear baits are registered and monitored and, and the owners are known, they shouldn't be allowed on Forest Service lands. That's what Wolf Patrol is advocating for the Schwamagon Nicolay National Forest. So we're off of Fiscal Road in the same area where we just came for one bait that was just 50 feet off of the Forest Service Road and we're now parked at another Forest Service turnout. We're gonna measure the next bait down the road and see how close it is to the, to the road. We're at 84 feet, which is once again substantially less than the 50 yard requirement. I see a trail camera on the site, so I'm hoping that this is somebody who uh, the DNR can be informed about. Let DNR know about this bait so they can contact the bear baiter and let them know that they're out of compliance, I think, or, or find out whether they are. That's kind of what we're doing here today is just checking on baits, making sure they're in compliance or not. Something just incredible just happened. It's July 4th and we're checking bear baits that are potentially out of compliance because they're too close to the road. And while we're investigating this road, uh, looking for bear baits, we just saw a wolf cross right in front of us. Uh, just walked right across the road here and dallied into the forest there. So we're gonna check out tracks. But this is exactly why we're here. It's because the overlap of wolf territory and bear hound training and baiting activities is a recipe for disaster that'll lead to conflicts. We don't want to see bear hounds killed. We don't want to see wolves killed. We want to see both people, <laughs> people being the wolves and the bears, uh, going about their own ways. Uh, so this is what we're asking DNR to do. We're asking DNR to put into place a bear bait registration system, uh, a system whereby compensation is not paid to hound hunters who run their dogs through wolf territory after a depredation has happened. Uh, we'd like to see enforcement of the minimalist baiting regulations that exist so that people that place their baits less than 100 yards from the highway or 50 yards are sighted. We're gonna check out and see what's going on here. I'm looking for tracks.